Well, answering your own door, are you? This is certainly like old times. What do you want? I uh, take it that uh, Miss Lucas isn't around here anywhere? Well, I wanted to spend some time with my daughter alone, so I gave her a few hours. Morning. Harold. <laughs> Hello, Harold. Hi. I uh, assume that you rested comfortably uh, last yes, night. Yes, indeed. You might say that. Mm. Well, to state the obvious, it's real good to have you back. <laughs> nice compliment, Harold. Very nice. But as I did say a moment ago, I'd like to spend time alone with them. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Harold. It's obviously good to be back mm. here. Have you got anything exciting planned for today? Yes, yes. <laughs> as a matter of fact, my wonderful father is going to treat me to an afternoon of sheer indulgence at Adrian's. Oh, that's right, the new salon. Uh -huh. And would you believe I'm going to start with an herbal body wrap and uh, then have, uh, I think, a steam bath, maybe sauna, a massage, pedicure, manicure, complete mm -hmm. facial, mm -hmm. the hair, mm -hmm. the work, you know. <laughs> well, I always said there's nothing like a jump from the ridiculous to the sublime. <laughs> and I always said there's nothing too good from them. <laughs> Well, gosh, with all that, I don't suppose you're going to have a lot of time for some visits from some friends? Oh, no, no, I'm hoping I am. I have so much to catch up on. Oh, I'm real glad to hear you say that, because yeah. Babs, for one, really wants to see you. <laughs> no, Harold. That is quite out of the question. Daddy! In I finally got you home, and I don't want to see the mistakes of the past repeated. Now, these so-called friends of yours have really done you quite a bit of harm. Now that the break is clean, from those people, I want it maintained. Mem, I realize what I just said might sound, uh, well, a bit harsh. But I'm sure that if you look at the facts in the situation, you'll see that I'm right. No, no, Daddy, you're not. Because if anything, people like Babs and I own and Terry have helped me. And you have no more right in telling me who I can and cannot see than I would have in, in trying to tell you how to run your own business. Now, I do understand that uh, because this is your house, if you say that Babs cannot visit me here, then that's your choice. But realize that that just means that I will go out to see her. Harold, do you think uh, maybe Babs would like to join me this afternoon at the salon? Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think that that might be a good idea. Terrific, terrific. Then, if you gentlemen will just excuse me, I think I shall go up to begin planning a very busy day. Thank you, Harold, for your cooperation in this matter. I just, what in the world was I supposed to say, Charles? I think the Babs would enjoy it. Was there any special reason for this visit this morning, or did you just come over here to upset me? I came over here for a couple of things. Uh, first of all, there's the little matter of uh, a briefcase somewhere around here with $400,000 uh -huh. in it. I'll get that to the bank presently. Alone? No, Harold. I've hired the Kingsley High School Band, and we're going to parade up Main Street together. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll just go along with you. Well, suit yourself. Now, what else? I was over at the King's Arms Hotel this morning, and that manager came up to me and said uh, that you and Miriam were going to be staying there. He didn't know how long, but that you told him that I was supposed to take care of it. Now, what is that all about? <laughs> I'm going to renovate this whole place. New everything from top to bottom. Why? Well, because considering the state of my health, the last thing I want to see is this sofa or that wallpaper. Well, gosh, Charles, why don't you just uh, move into a new house? Because this neighborhood gives me something I can't get anywhere else in town, the, uh, the ambiance of old money. And at this time, I find that very useful. Now, now what else is there? <sighs> now what? Well, maybe that's some of your uh, neighbors looking to share a little ambiance. 
Oh, good morning, Mr. Carpenter. Um, I own Redland called me and told me about Miriam. I was wondering if I could see her. Uh, well, uh, she's taking a shower right now. Oh, dear. And I only had a few minutes. Well, I'm sorry. Daddy, Daddy, who is it? Uh, why don't you try some other time? Daddy? Uh, finish what you were doing, Jerry! Nim. to say goodbye. Why? Have you changed your mind about anything? Well, it was wrong for me to compare Miriam's situation to mine. I mean, about the bad memories about Blue Nobles. I'm really glad that her faith is helping her to readjust. That doesn't answer my question. We can't keep doing this. We? I can't keep doing this. You're absolutely right. Unfortunately, your timing is pretty lousy. I have to be at the hospital in less than 20 minutes. Ben, please don't do this. You don't know what I went through to come out here and tell you that I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe I don't. Can we talk? OK. I, uh... I don't like what we've become, what I've made us. I've become really self-indulgent lately, and it's all like a pattern. And I, I've been giving in to what's easiest for me, and that's wrong. Well, I haven't been the most patient person in the world either, so. No, it's all come from me, Ben. I'm trying, I'm really trying, but it's just that it's so hard sometimes. Please help me, Ben. I've hurt you, and, I, and I'm ashamed. Help me. I do love you. How can we stop all of this? I don't know. Wanting to is at least something, isn't it? Yeah. And it was so odd that, I don't know, I just don't understand it, but there were some times when I just felt so close to God. It was almost overwhelming. And then other times I felt like he had completely deserted me, like he had never been further away. And now I just can't even explain that. I've gone through that a lot, too, since Scott died. Yeah? Well, you know, it used to be that I could never understand how in the Bible Peter could deny Jesus the way he did until I went through this ordeal. And I guess now I see that denial in a little bit different light now that I've been there. And you have been forgiven, just like Peter. Yeah, I know. So now that uh, God's mercy has been established in our lives for the thousandth time, yeah. what are you going to do? Well, I think the very first order of business ought to be getting in touch with Eric. That's right, his letter. Does he want to see yeah, you? Well, he did when he wrote me the letter, but who knows even what he's thinking right now. It's been so long since he's heard anything. and. He's probably thinking that I'm up to my old tricks again. Didn't your father correspond with him? No, no, it seems that uh, after the kidnappers contacted him, he just, I don't know, he decided not to write. But anyway, I, I think I shall make a call to England. That ought to be some phone call. Oh, <laughs> listen, kids have a great way of recognizing the truth, so I wouldn't worry about it too much if I were you. Yeah. Well, maybe Eric will just think kidnapping is some sort of glamorous adventure. At this point, I guess I'll just take anything and... Doorbell! You know, that is a wonderful sound. I just love it, especially when I'm free to go enter the door. Hi! I oh, hello, sweetheart. Hi. Is everything going all right this morning? It is morning? great. wouldn't believe how great. In fact, look, I've already had a visitor. Mm -hmm. I win. I got here first. I'm not as fast as I used to be, I guess. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. What, what's going on here? Well, we planned everything a little earlier this morning. You see, we didn't know what kind of interference we were going to run with your daddy. <laughs> so this is kind of like a little one-two punch. Uh-huh. Safety in numbers. Yeah, no, now listen, I know daddy's been a little bit difficult in the past, but honestly, he's, he's been an absolute doll since I was released. Good. Because between the three of us, he wouldn't stand a chance anyway. Oh, I own. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, if you're going to get to the hospital, you yeah. What is it? What's wrong? Nothing, really. Ben, it's your hand. And it's just a little tender this morning. Let me see. Honey, don't worry about it. Oh, Ben, what happened? I, uh, 
I just hit it, that's all. How? On the banister, I got mad at something, and uh, like an idiot, I smashed it. You were mad at me, weren't you? No, it was a stupid thing to do. I, I got exactly what I deserved. You were, and I'm, I'm sorry. Lori, listen to me, it wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. Ben, we're going to leave all this behind us, I promise. There's nothing more important to me right now than our relationship. And I'm going to put all my energy into it. Nothing else matters. Nothing? Nothing. What about the baby? What about it? Well, don't you think it deserves some attention, too? Ben, we're talking about us right now. But this little person is very much a part of us. Ben, please. One thing at a time, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. But I do have one question for you, though. Why haven't you followed up on Dr. Galvin's request for a return visit? I was busy. Doing what? Things. And what about you? You shouldn't talk. What have you done about your hands since you hit it? I'm going to see Jack Egan this morning. Oh. Honey, look, I know you don't like seeing doctors, but uh, if I can do it, so can you. What do you say? I will make an appointment with Dr. Galvin. Good. When? Tomorrow? Next week, I think. Next week? Lori, the welfare of this baby depends on you. It's helpless right now. It's helpless, and it, it's, things have gotten off to a bad start with the trauma from the attack and, and your weight loss. Just please promise me you're going to start taking care of yourself and the baby. See Dr. Galvin as soon as possible. Okay? All right? Okay. All right. Bye. And then when I woke up this morning and I saw the sunlight streaming through the windows and I felt the softness of the bed, I, I, I thought I was dreaming and I didn't want to wake up. You know, I, it was like I felt awake, but I kept fighting the feeling because I was afraid that I would wake up uh, and that I would find myself right back in that, that old dirty block house. Then, then my daddy walked in this morning and I knew that it was real. You have no idea how relieved I was when that happened. I guess it's not until our, our freedom is taken away that we realize just how much we've taken that for granted. Yeah, most of us never appreciate what we have until after we've lost it. Yeah. I guess I'm just lucky that I got mine back. How about a blessed? Hmm? Blessed, yes, yes, that is a very good way of putting it. You know what, you two? You have no idea how much I thought of you when I was there. I would, I would wonder about you. I'd wonder what you were doing, who you were talking to, what was happening. Oh, Miriam, you were constantly in our thoughts and our prayers every day. Thank you. Thank you for those prayers, because I know that they are what helped me maintain my sanity, my, my safety during that whole time. Yes. Don't you just love the sound of that doorbell? <laughs> it's wonderful. She has really changed. <laughs> Oh, wrong Hi. house, sorry. Hey, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? Yes, come here, oh, it's so good to see you. Don't you dare leave me. You too, kid. I mean, the least you could have done was phoned us or something. I mean, we were worried half to death about you. You know, I did. I kept trying to call you, your line was always busy. Oh, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Fab, it's Folly. What are you doing out of that hotel room? Ooh, you were supposed to be gone by now. You promised Mr. Webster and I that you would sit tight. Oh, look. Give me a break, will you? I mean, the only thing that was on TV today was some local broad on a talk show discussing Venetian blind dust. I figured this was more important. <laughs> oh, she's right. Oh, well, let me remember my manners. May I give you some coffee? No, I think we really got to be going. Yes, and I should be at the clinic already. And uh -huh. I have got a staff meeting that I've got to prepare for. Oh, Mary, welcome home. Oh, thank you. Thank you for stopping by, Terry. I appreciate it. Oh, sweetheart, I, I'll give you a little call later. Okay, please, I want everyone, everyone to keep calling me and coming by just as often as you can all the time. Okay, you asked for it. <laughs> and you take care of yourself, young lady? Hey, it's a long time since anybody called me that. I'm serious, Babs. Oh, I'll be all right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Ah, -bye. Oh, now if there's anything you need or want, now you just holler. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. And now, young lady, you come here. I want you to sit down. We have so much to catch up on. Yeah, well, before we go into all that, there's something that I have to know. Why? Well, 
It's about everything that happened to you. Okay, okay. It's just that if you were really furious with me and never wanted to speak to me again, I wouldn't blame you. Babs, don't be silly. What reason would I have to be angry with you? Come on. Lance and Ronnie kidnapped you by mistake. I mean, they were out to get me. I know. Come on, wait a minute. No, 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 no. You never would have suffered through all that except for me. I mean, I had to go walking around in that stupid blonde wig. We could have passed for twins. Uh, no, Babs, no. Yes. And I'm just grateful that your old man's loaded and they decided to ask him for a ransom. Otherwise, they would have, they would have killed you a long time ago. <sighs> what I, I guess what I'm really trying to say is that I hope you find it in your heart to still be my friend. But if you can't, then I'll understand. You know what, Babs Farley? What? You can be really dumb sometimes. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Look, lady, we are not open yet for another few minutes. You'll just have to wait. Look, I don't care what you say. I would like to see Dave, and I know he's here because I saw his car parked oh, out the back. What's going on here? Uh, Dave, look. Oh, I should have guessed. Look, Dave, I think you ought to be more selective about the people you employ. Image is everything. Wish we could be more selective about our patients. You're aware that we're not open yet. Yeah, I know, but this is an emergency. All right, what can I do for you now, Mrs. Lawson? Oh, it's Nancy, please. It, um, well, I've been feeling kind of dizzy, and, and my head has been pounding again. It's really awful headaches. Well, look, as I told you before, other than admitting you to the hospital for a series of tests, there's really nothing more I can do for you. But, Doctor, look, you really have to help me because I don't have any insurance coverage. You can't put a price tag on your health, Mrs. Lawson. Well, I know, but please, look, I think something's wrong. And if I don't get it checked out, I, I don't know. And look, you're here for the underprivileged, right? All right, Nancy. Take off your coat and roll up your sleeves. You're not going to give me a shot, are you? I mean, I'm afraid of needles. No, I'm just going to take your blood pressure. Get up here. Oh. No. If I remember correctly, it was uh, slightly elevated the last time you were in. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah. Well, you know me. I've always been an overachiever. I kind of throw myself into whatever I'm doing, and you know, I get a little... Shh. Well, it's more serious than I thought. What? It's 154 over 103. This article only confirms all the horrible feelings I had about Vince's occupation. I'm sorry, Marianne. He always seemed like such a gentleman. Isn't there something in the Bible that says how God knows our hearts? Well, one place says that man looks at the outward appearance, mm -hmm. but God looks in the heart. Yeah, that's it. You know, to the world, Vince just seemed like the pinnacle of success. So refined and debonair. But inwardly, look what he was into. Drugs and prostitution. I know this may sound strange. But somehow I wish that rest were mentioned in this. Mary Ann, why? Because then at least I'd know how deeply involved he is. And I'd also know where he is. I called him earlier and there was no answer. So I stopped by the townhouse. He's gone. Do you think he's hiding from the law? <sighs> Seems obvious. Marianne, come on, sit down. I wonder if I'm, if I'm ever going to see him again. <sighs> he really loved his father, you know? We were talking about that one night, just before he broke up. Poor Vince. Terry, this thing just keeps getting more complicated. Uh, what are you doing Sunday? Oh, that's Easter. Oh, I don't know. I really haven't given it much thought. How would you like to spend the day with us? We'll be going to church in the morning, and then we're going to have a nice dinner. What do you say? I'd like that. Good. Terry, tell me all this is going to end. Tell me that things are going to get better. Wait a minute, what, just hold on here. I don't need any prescription. I'm just fine. I think your machine's broken, okay? Nancy, if we don't take care of this, it can lead to all sorts of complications. A stroke, a kidney malfunction. Yeah, well, look, save your breath, doctor, because it's not going to lead to anything with me. I'm just fine, okay? Well, what about your symptoms? They seem real enough. Well, it was probably just something I ate, okay? Nancy, you're being silly. I mean, high blood pressure is serious, but it can be treated effectively. 
Why won't you let me help you? Because, Doctor, high blood pressure is for old people. My mother had high blood pressure. Charles Carpenter had high blood pressure. I don't have high blood pressure because I'm not old. I'm young, okay? Y'all come back and see us now. Oh, oh excuse me. Would you just get out of my way, please? Oh, what was that all about? Vanity, vanity, I name thee Nancy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Terry. You are a real friend. Anytime, Marianne. I mean it. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I've made you prove that once too often. No, 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 no. Well, I guess I'll see you Sunday. Complete with my broccoli casserole. Okay. I'll look forward to it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Please touch us. Make us yours. In Jesus' name, I pray. 